Under the pressure of economic circumstances, farmers reluctantly at times are forced to become specialists like everybody else. So we were very happy to find one who hasn't. Fred Dagg faces each new day fresh in body and optimistic in spirit because unlike the specialists, he finds that the current economic climate is having little or no effect on his level of profitability. Ah. Hey, ah. Turn the separator off. The stock we've got on the farm, we've got uh, all sorts of animals here. Um, you do need animals in farming, we've found, uh, and we've got all manner of animal here. We've got um, cows, horses, sheep, ducks, uh, fowl, chooks, geese, uh, hamsters, the wife. Uh, basically, uh, for economic reasons, though, um, we tend to concentrate on the, on the cows and the sheep, uh, the others being domestic animals, and they don't pay. Uh, we find they don't pay very well. Uh, neither, of course, do the do the cows and the sheep, but they do pay a little better than, for instance, the hamster, which is, uh, uh, there's not a lot of return on hamsters at the moment on the open market. What we are about to receive, we must remember to thank the old sheep. Uh, I run the place with my sons, uh, of whom there are uh, approximately half a dozen. Uh, <coughs> Trevor here, uh, he's the firstborn, and um, he's the eldest as a result uh, of that, and um, he's a... Um, uh, a little thick, actually, is Trevor, but a very, very valuable man indeed with cows. Um, Trevor, uh, on the other hand, is uh, more your sheep man, uh, and there's not a lot that he doesn't know about the about the woolly creatures. Uh, Trevor, um, the uh, he's the third one. Uh, he was involved for uh, for several years in animal husbandry. Unfortunately, though, he was uh, apprehended and spent some time uh, at the Mount Crawford office and uh, but since being back uh, he too has been um, a uh, tower of strength um, Trevor on the other hand is very interested in crops uh, he's actually something of a bore on all other known subjects but on crops uh, he really knows his onions uh, then there's Trevor uh, who for some time was away studying economics but uh, he found that didn't pay uh, that wasn't paying at all as far as Trevor was concerned so uh, we've got him back on the farm now and we're very grateful indeed to have him back Woolshed fell down last night. I don't know what you made it of, Trevor. Uh, all the other lads have been, um, over the years, have been built up uh, with good, wholesome, strong meals and uh, quite a lot of work and toil out in the field. Uh, young Trevor hasn't had uh, quite so much experience in that regard, and uh, uh, he's a little, um, he's a little, well, he's a little fellow. He's puny, uh, is, is young Trev, and uh, to tell you the truth, we're a trifle worried about him. I want you to look out for that cow today, the eczema. You can't miss it, it looks like the old Sheila. I think I might go into town today, so I want the number plate taken off the tractor, put on the Land Rover. We've got uh, 14,000 acres, uh, 13,000 in grass and 1,000 in rock up the back. Uh, now what you see here is that uh, the, the, uh, the land basically is uh, divisible into, into two basic types. There's the, there's the hill, the, the, uh, the actual hill country and then uh, then there's the, the flat country, which has uh, not got any hills on it at all. Uh, now, I run this place uh, with the boys uh, with military precision. Now, uh, we do have a difficulty sometimes uh, with the similarity of the, of the boys' names. Uh, but we tend to get around it fair enough and, 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 and basically the place runs very well. Uh, I'm not a hard taskmaster but I do like to be uh, to have my uh, instructions well understood and to have everybody who knows his job and, he, and he's not going to go and do anyone else's and no one's going to go and do his. The place runs very very well indeed, very much like the way that uh, 
that Montgomery uh, organised the um, the army um, during the war, uh, and uh, one would hope with uh, similar results. Uh, now, one of the most important uh, aspects of the pastoral existence uh, in our particular case is the um, the, uh, the breaks that we have during the day where uh, I like to um, get the lads together. Uh, they all um, have a bit of a feed. We get a bit hungry out there working. And uh, I have a, uh, have a few words to them about uh, oh, what sort of thing we're going to do uh, for the rest of the day and uh, how we've been doing. And <coughs> uh, in, uh, in particular, we like to try and build up little Trev, who, as I said before, is proving a little bit of a problem in the weight department. He weighs about, oh, seven or eight ounces, and uh, this is uh, just not paying. Uh -huh. Righto, you guys. Now then. Now then, listen. Trev, I want you to go and inseminate the herd. Trev, I want you to have a decent look at the tractor. Seems to be running backwards. Uh, Trev, I want you to go down the patent office and see if you can get hold of that separator I sent down there. Yep. Trev, I want you to shift that hill that annoys me there. I want you to tow it down and put it in that hollow down there where I was showing you all that bad pasture. Yep. Oh. And Trev, I want you to whip up the back and change the earmarks on those 200 hoggets. And if the vet asks where the old ones are, tell him they fell off. All right for you. Yeah, good day. Uh, this is the uh, this is the milking setup. Uh, she's uh, she's been as far as farm economics is concerned. She's been a uh, yeah, righto. She's been a, a fair proposition. Uh, it cost us about um, on a per bale rate uh, would have cost us around ooh around 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 about twenty five dollars. <coughs> Uh, no, 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 that's for the whole thing. Actually, the uh, the wife did most of the heavy work. Uh, we were going to put in a, uh, a rotary setup, but um, but uh, oh, the brother-in-law's got one of those, and uh, oh, they're not uh, perhaps as good as they're cracked up to be. He's um, you know, he's, uh, he's had a bit of trouble with it. Apparently, uh, something went wrong with the uh, with the rotary mechanism, and uh, he found he was homogenising his milk before it left the property, which apparently doesn't pay. Uh, so uh, we've got this set up here which we're very happy with. We've had a little bit of trouble with it recently though. Um, had a little bit of trouble, bit of bother with it. Uh, what uh, what exactly was the trouble? Well, the, uh, the overthackling multi fry screw on the uh, under the compressor <coughs> plate moved into the uh, thatching unit and crossed yes, all right. the... Shut the up Trev, uh, yeah I got it here, it broke. Uh, Get out of there! Yeah, it broke and uh, We've uh, we've had people out from the town uh, looking at it, uh, oh, jaggers, or oh, all sorts of jaggers, but uh, they didn't seem to be able to work out what was the matter with it. Uh, actually, the wife fixed it uh, one night. Never found out what was the matter with that. Um, uh, hello, that's the uh, that's the neighbour. He's looking for a couple of hundred tooths he lost a couple of weeks ago. He won't find them out there. We buried them up the back there. Um, he'll never find them. The sheep at the moment are not paying, and of course the bigger the sheep is, uh, the more it's not paying. So what we're doing here is that we're doing uh, quite a lot of experimental breeding. Uh, now what we've bred uh, in the last couple of years is that we've managed to breed a sheep which is a smaller sheep than the uh, average uh, sized sheep. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a sm it's not quite as large, that is to say. Uh, this is a very valuable addition to our stock because it means that uh, the money that you're losing is not quite so much. Now the difficulty at the moment is keeping them small because uh, they tend to, uh, once you get them just in the piggy condition, they tend to run a complete riot on you. Uh, so uh, what we're doing at the moment is we're trying to, uh, once we've got them to, this, to the point uh, where they become economically viable, is to just keep them there. I've sent, uh, I've sent several truckloads of these off to uh, Massey and Lincoln and very detailed uh, plans. I've sent them other ideas too. Uh, which they won't listen to. I'm having a lot of trouble with these lads. Uh, they just won't listen to common sense. Big small one. I can do it on my own.
trip. Uh, I go to town about uh, or about once every or at least once every five years. Uh, I like to get in there as often as possible. Uh, um, now, I, I, it's not that I, I don't like really like the towns. I, I'm not very keen on the towns at all, in fact. But uh, I mean, a man's got to go in there sometimes and get a few provisions, one or two things that you can't get uh, out of the wool shed or off the neighbour's place. And uh, so you have to go into town. Uh, I reason I don't like going into town is uh, well, the first reason is that uh, well, the whole thing is rather rather confusing. Uh, yeah, in in the simple respect, for instance, of driving. Now, I mean, a bloke has uh, been driving since he was four. A bloke uh, can drive up and down, backwards. He can drive in his sleep. But go to town, and uh, I mean, last time I was in town, for instance, uh, uh, you know what what used to be a, a two-way streets now a one-way street. You can't turn here. You used to be able to turn there, and now that's a block of flats and stuff. It's uh, very, very difficult. Another thing is, I mean, a bloke gets dressed up, a bloke's perfectly normal in all respects, he's wearing very, very uh, conventional clothing, um, he gets out in the streets and everybody stops and looks at him, uh, which is by no means comforting uh, to the rural person, uh, in which category I class myself. Um, and uh, as a result, it's a, it's a wee bit on the horrendous side, is this town going. Um, it has to be done. It has to be done, I make no bones about it, but I do like to try in uh, so far as is possible to play it my own way. I, you know, I go to town, but I, but I don't, uh, I don't really ever want to become a town person. Uh, therefore, I'll, I'll, I'll wear their clothes and I'll, I'll look as poncy as you like. But I won't, uh, I, I can't bring myself to, to live their life in its entirety. I, I like to uh, just put one or two snippets of my own life uh, into me town-going experiences. Now about pastures, uh, you will find that most uh, most animals eat grass, so we're very concerned to keep the green outer covering of the earth in good order, but we're having a lot of trouble. Uh, there are several things that can go wrong with pastures. Uh, here, this is a classic example of what we've got here. Uh, this is not very good pasture at all because it's too damp. It's too wet uh, for the animals to get their teeth around. Uh, this over here uh, in the shallows is better pasture than this deep stuff, but uh, basically they're both fairly bad and we try to keep the stock as far as possible uh, onto the more green area. As I was telling you, we're having a bit of trouble with the milking gear. Uh, so I've invented a machine to get round it. I've, uh, actually, most of it's down at the patent office. We've been waiting for it to come back for a couple of days, but the railways won't touch it. But will be back shortly. But we have uh, one or two bits and pieces here which we can explain to you. Firstly, uh, the idea being that uh, we milk the cows uh, out on the field. G'day. Yeah. Uh, we milk the cows um, out on the paddock, and uh, then we go round with this uh, machine, and we collect uh, the milk. The problem being that we've got to... Uh, separate the milk from the hay and this has been a rather tricky one but uh, let me just explain to you basically uh, this piece of mechanism here that's the canopy get that out of the way for you now what happens basically is that uh, 
this thing here, this cuts the uh, this cuts the uh, hands. It cuts the uh, the hay and uh, lies it on the ground. We'll just get rid of that. Here. And the next thing that happens is that this machine here, uh, which is connected with a piece of chain, like so. Uh, now this picks the hay up uh, with the milk. We'll just get rid of that for you. Get that out of the way there. Now the milk is then pumped up through this, or pumped down, depending on whether the machine's upside down, which happened the other day, rather a tricky one that. But that, the uh, the pump that, uh, that's what that does. Now then, uh, g'day. That's the neighbour, he's looking for his tractor, I don't think he'll find it actually, most of it's incorporated in the bit that's down at the patent office. Sit down. Now this is the hub cap, that's just in case we take the machine to town. Let's get rid of that for you. Now what happens is that the hay, comes into this thing and it's separated here by uh, by these uh, separating apparatuses and it comes out here it comes out here we'll just get rid of that there for you now the milk on the other hand the milk runs down through here runs right down through here and is duly separated and in some occasions if the uh, machine's working fast enough it homogenizes at the same time which is very handy indeed uh, now the milk then runs off into this thing, actually we're not getting a lot of milk uh, with this method, not getting a lot of milk at all because the machine's not cutting low enough, we're just getting the milk that's uh, sitting on the top of the hay, we'll just get rid of that for you. Now the uh, hay comes down and is uh, placed in the boot, g'day, uh, uh, and uh, of course when we get home, these are the sides, the sides of the vehicle. And uh, well that's about all there is to it really, uh, it's a pity I can't uh, get it going for you. But, uh, sit down! But, uh, we'll have it jacked up tomorrow if you'd like to come back. Thank you very much. Get out, you rotten f This farm was handed down to me uh, by my uncle, Wally Rehab. Um, now the boys have grown up, there's a, a great companionship, there's a bond, there's a there's a great feeling of, uh, of all getting together and, p and pulling uh, equal weights uh, in the evening when uh, we go for a stroll prep before, uh, before uh, uh, bolting into the dinners. Uh, I you know, look across the, across the, the low bits and uh, off into the uh, high bits in the distance and uh, I, think, um, I think, well, really, uh, I mean, a, ma a man couldn't be better off. A man could not be better off. Puncture. Come on. Get in behind. Now, one of the more important things about farming these days is the the machinery and the equipment. Now. Uh, Machinery and equipment are, um, are precision uh, articles and uh, they've got to be very, very well maintained indeed. They've got to be looked after, they've got to be cared for or otherwise they're just not going to pay. They're going to be uneconomic uh, and uh, there's, uh, there's nothing worse on a farm than an uneconomic non-paying proposition. At the moment I've got a totally non-paying uneconomic proposition to the tune of 14,000 acres. The, uh, the wool clip that, uh, that we get uh, off this particular place is now not getting half the money we were getting uh, and as a result uh, sheep, well quite frankly, they don't pay. Uh, now as a result, uh, instead, of, uh, instead of shearing twice a year, what we're doing at the moment is we're not shearing this year and uh, we're putting uh, back onto the sheep uh, the wool we took off them in the previous year. Uh, now this process, the wooling, uh, goes on uh, at approximately the same time as the shearing used to um, and uh, what ha basically happens is that there's a uh, we, we do the do the full muster as usual we pull them all in and uh, we uh, rip through them in the in the yards pull them out uh, crack the fleeces back on them and we uh, we we find it necessary to um, to uh, rivet the uh, fleeces on uh, for a certain period until uh, we can ascertain whether or not the the old fleece is taking that is to say whether or not it's uh, the actual graft uh, onto the skin of the sheep is working. Oh, that's too big, Trev. <laughs> uh, one thing that doesn't pay at all well at the moment is uh, buying stock in. 
Uh, we haven't bought any stock in here for about 12, 15 or 16 years now. Uh, well, now, we get our stock, uh, well, we, we, we get hold of a bit uh, here and there, uh, not, you know, going into it too deeply. Uh, the only person we see a good deal of is uh, the neighbour. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we see quite a lot of the neighbour. He's always over here uh, looking for bits and pieces of his... Uh, of his stock, um, he never. I don't think he's ever found anything. The earmarks are always whipped straight out. Um, the brands are changed, and of course the serial numbers. Uh, I, I can't see that we'll uh, be running across him much more often. One farmer's problems are never quite the same as those of another, and for this we should all be thankful. Whatever the future holds, there is one thing on which we can all depend, their enduring single-mindedness. <laughs> <laughs>